those goals. It marks the start of our aggressive launch campaign. Um, you know, unfortunately, there's no audio. Okay. Now give us a sec while we figure out why. Okay, please uh, try again. Sorry, Mina, could you please uh, try uh, restarting? In three, two, one. Apologies for some of these technical difficulties a little bit later on. Uh, so hey, everyone, thanks for tuning in to our live stream event today. We've got an exciting program ahead that'll describe our mission today, the work that went into it, our operating plans, and I'm excited to announce that the launch has gone up into orbit. So we'll be providing a play-by-play -play update as we hear more information. We don't have live video of the event. Unfortunately, the camera crew had to quarantine, but we will be providing text updates of the work that's ongoing. Before turning it over to our team, I'd like to give a brief overview on what we're doing here at Kepler. From our founding in 2015, our long-term goal has always been to enable the space economy by putting the internet outside Earth. And to get there, there are two steps. The first is serving connectivity needs here on Earth, and the second is serving the needs outside of Earth. And we've been steadily stepping towards that goal. Our team has doubled in size every year since inception, where we're almost 70 people today. We've acquired spectrum rights to operate both our wideband and our narrowband communication, and we've delivered service all the way to the poles. Our mission today is yet another milestone achievement towards those goals. It marks the start of our aggressive launch campaign for the years to come and has on board the first spacecraft entirely produced by Kepler in our headquarters. The satellites in orbit today validate our high caliber production facility and the novel designs we've put together with some of our partners, including Spaceflight Labs and Sinclair Interplanetary. Generation One, which is launching today, follows our first three tech demo satellites to deliver service for the wide variety of customer needs we've identified out in the market. It builds on our high throughput global data service for large volume file transfer and will enable our customers to trial our narrowband service offering. We've got a great program ahead, so stay tuned and make sure to follow us on social media for the latest and updates on this launch and any of Kepler's work. I'll now turn it over to Jared, our Director of Space Systems, and he'll describe the mission and the work that went into it. The Gentleman program allows us to have an asset that is as reproducible and as quick to upgrade as the, the pace of innovation that we also have here at Kepler for our payloads in, in the markets that we serve. So we, we were very fortunate to partner with the University of Toronto Institute for Aerospace Studies uh, Space Flight Laboratory, or SFL, in developing the, the Gen 1 constellation, the Gen 1 platform. And we were really able to leverage SFL's 20 plus years of heritage in designing small satellites and take that as a package and see how we could build it uh, modular, smaller, and reproduce it from building one at a time to uh, six, twenty, and really ultimately to the complete constellation. We really upped the bar.
bar of what's possible in, in a small system. Um, going zero to 60 uh, from design concepts all the way through uh, flight of the first two units and batch production, uh, all in just over a year. And we did that all from right here in downtown Toronto. So what Gen 1 means for, for Kepler is we're able to now uh, own the production of this very capable platform and system that will provide a rapid, reliable, and reproducible service. Um, so from all of our services, as we expand into new markets, we, we now have an asset that uh, we can quickly get up into orbit. The, the benefit is it allows us to not be technologically constrained to a single market. We really wanted to centralize our production here in downtown Toronto to take advantage of the fast-paced atmosphere, the wide breadth of talent that we can tap into, and, and really take that spirit and apply it to uh, the space industry, developing satellites where uh, this is a, a new approach. And it, I think that gives us a real unique flair and a, a unique way of approaching the problem. My favorite moment at Kepler is probably a, a lot of moments uh, collectively here as a team. Over, over the past year especially, uh, we've grown the team so much in, in principally in, in how we're building our spacecraft and there's, I can count so many moments where we're you know, spending long hours in the lab, um, long hours on the production floor trying to solve those those stupid little uh, bugs that you put in the, the other night that was, you know, a, a comma or a, a negative sign in your code and 30, 40 hours later, uh, after you've turn, turned apart a full spacecraft and put it back together, um, just so happened to catch it and then everybody has a laugh and you, and you go up for, for dinner because the uh, the problem solved and uh, we had a number of those so it's it's that those fun moments of total despair uh, cap encapsulated with oh we actually kind of knew what we were doing all along and it was a typo. That's, that's my bread and butter. Um, and what's really unique about what we're doing here at Kepler is starting from our core philosophy of how we approach manufacturing. And it's centered around two key tenets, being lean and being agile. And building a production line associated with those tenets enables us to be cost efficient while also allowing us to be innovative and collaborative and be at the forefront of technology. No other company have I worked at where we can go from design to prototype to production in such a short time scale. So what's really unique, we're in the heart of downtown Toronto and um, it's just it's so exciting to be able to look out the window and see the CN Tower. For going the beautiful cityscape, we, the way we approached our production facility and the, the process and layout was really boring from core manufacturing especially in assembly lines and automotive. We're really deploying the assembly line for satellites. That's super exciting and it's, it's what really drives me into work every day. At Kepler, we want to be a lean, agile production facility. A way we approach this and a core tenant to achieving this is quality. The way we approach quality, first and foremost, is quality at the source. Our highly skilled and talented operators are constantly inspecting parts for part defects that we can feed back to our suppliers. Furthermore, during the assembly of these products, our operators are vigilant, finding the defects at the source. A further safety net we have is quality at the end. We have a final quality and final flight closeout of our parts and processes to ensure that we're producing the optimal spacecraft possible. One of the most exciting things about working at Kepler 
and one of my fondest memories is the sense of unity and team and camaraderie to pursue a goal that's larger than any individual. A specific example of this is oftentimes we're, we're against the gun and we're trying to meet a production deadline and there have been so many times where team members from different departments have pulled resources together to deliver a quality product and just being a part of that and seeing that happen is it's super exciting. that we have on orbit right now, Kip, Case, and TARS are technology demonstrators and they've allowed us to prove out our communications payload. The Gen 1 satellites that are launching today take a lot of lessons learned from these first three. The Gen 1 satellites launching today are slightly bigger than the tech demonstrators with improved communications payload, more power, and improved thermal control, which allows for a higher duty cycle and allows us to service more customers. These satellites will include both a high data rate antenna for the global data service and low data rate antenna for IoT. Since we've gone from concept to launch in a very short time, our testing is likewise very fast paced. We've run an aggressive assembly integration and testing phase where we build and test the satellite in a matter of months. We can do the large majority of testing in-house, which means we're not reliant on external contractor schedules, and our partnership with Utah's SFL for satellite design has allowed us to leverage their experience in flight heritage. So my my favorite memory from Kepler so far is uh, the delivery of the two satellites that we're launching today. We spent a lot of time uh, building and testing um, these satellites and it was a huge amount of work and a really, really big push on a very tight timeline to get these satellites out the door. And the day that we packed them up, we packed both of them up into the same launch pod and it was a very exciting moment to see them finally going out the door and getting ready to launch into space. Five, four. Three, two, one, zero. Stop. Stop normal. Pass man. In general, uh, satellite operations are responsible for handling the spacecraft after launch. Day-to-day, uh, -day, we make sure that the spacecraft is healthy, the power levels look good, and we ensure that the spacecraft isn't spinning. Uh, we often debug issues when, something, when some of the aforementioned things aren't as expected or when things go wrong on the satellite. What's part of the responsibilities of satellite operations engineers on the ground station side is to ensure that the ground stations are in sync with what we expect to, to see with our satellites. So we have to make sure that the antennas on the ground are pointing at the satellite when we expect a, a physical pass above these ground stations. So this is kind of just like a coordination or a synchronization of the ground stations with the satellites. My favorite 
memory at Kepler so far was definitely the TARS launch. I was part of the commanding team um, right after launch. So first acquisition of signal and during the, the Lee up phase. So that was a 36 hours of being awake behind the console with my colleague, Paul, where we essentially ensured that the spacecraft TARS was healthy and we prepared it for commissioning activities post launch. My name is Christine. I work as a satellite operations specialist here at Kepler Communications within the network operations team. Uh, three minutes, Jake. Our responsibilities are mainly centered around ensuring all our assets in space are healthy and operating as expected. Um, so just to give kind of an analogy, without operators, a satellite would essentially just be a body floating in space. There are three different aspects that we tend to focus on in satellite operations. So spacecrafts in orbit, spacecrafts in development, and the overall ground segment. So for spacecrafts in orbit, our work includes performing day-to-day -day tasks to keep them healthy and delivering their service as intended, addressing any anomalies that come up, and trying to deal with them as quickly as possible in order to bring them back into service. For satellites in development, this means supporting launch and commissioning preparations, which includes familiarizing ourselves with the overall functionality of the spacecraft and understanding how we're going to operate them once they're in space. For the ground segment portion, this means developing and improving the software tools that we use to communicate with our satellites and also monitoring and maintaining our ground segment elements as well. When we consider sort of like the future for network operations here at Kepler and how we plan to scale in order to support our own growing constellation, so one of them is the ground station infrastructure and the second one is the ground software systems. So that includes all the softwares and tools that we use at Kepler. I believe automation is a huge component in being able to support a ground constellation. You know, network operations, we're currently a team of five people and there's just no way that we can manage 140 satellites by ourselves manually. Although not all of our work is predictable, there are tasks that are like scheduling that we can and are working on automating. In terms of the infrastructure here, we're trying to target sort of a fully integrated approach. We're looking to build out our own core ground station infrastructure so that we can try to eliminate as much external dependency as we can and also eliminate costs that are associated with using third-party providers. Having our own infrastructure also provides us a greater level of quality and control over our services. For uh, this current launch for the uh, generation one that we're trying to roll out, there are definitely added complexities in terms of the platform. The differences between that and KIP case and TARS from a satellite operations perspective is definitely the ground segment software that we use. I actually started on the day where we went into lockdown. Um, so my first day, there was no one really in the office. I didn't really get to meet my team in person. But I think it's been really cool that we've been able to kind of connect as a team and I got to meet a lot of people within Kepler even if I wasn't even though I wasn't in the office. The Soyuz 2 launch that we were riding is uh, was launched from uh, Plesex Cosmodrome um, and uh, that is in northeastern Russia. Uh, there were a number of satellites on board. In addition to the primary customer, there were actually 19 small satellites, and 15 of these were arranged via a large broker, ExoLaunch. And uh, two of those were um, R2 satellites, Kepler 4, Kepler 5, uh, more amicably known as uh, Antilles and Amidala. Nevertheless, we're traveling in a uh, very international company with uh, satellites from Europe, the US, and uh, the UAE. Uh, this joint mission uh, for, for ExoLaunch is referred to as um, Wonderlust, which means the desire to travel. And that's a reference to two things. Um, one is kind of easier and more available access to space um, as we move forward, uh, but is also in reference to the current times and the desire to travel um, under COVID restrictions and the times that we live in at the moment. So an exciting time for us during definitely a difficult time. Um, and as you can see, a lot of us are uh, recording and doing some of these launch things from home. 
Uh, so uh, we're, we're able to adapt in that way. The actual launch today was at 11.20 UTC, uh, which is universal coordinated time, kind of a common world time system that's used in a number of applications. There's actually a four hour offset to that to Toronto time. So it was at 7.20 AM local for us, so just under two hours ago. And we'll watch some footage of that now. And there was liftoff, uh, an emotional and proud moment for the Kepler team, the beginning of our Generation 1 constellation. So Kepler-4 and Kepler-5, Antilles and Amidala, um, are deployed into a 575-kilometer sun-synchronous orbit. Um, and uh, we will be acquiring them somewhere around 12.30 local time. So for anybody following in UTC, that's uh, 16.30 UTC. So as was mentioned before, these two satellites are augmenting our high capacity GDS service with uh, KU band communication system and also host a IoT payload um, for the Everywhere IoT service and uh, have a number of advancements over our three satellites in orbit and increasing our capacity to five currently. Um, we'll be able to see both of the satellites somewhat simultaneously for the first little bit. Um, and so over the course of the next hours and the next days, we'll be bringing them through LEOP and commissioning in parallel. So what's called LEOP is uh, the launch and early orbit phase, and that's the time where you do an acquisition, your first acquisition after launch of the satellites, and confirm that they are healthy, that uh, they're stable, and that uh, that initial period, through that initial period, they're operating well. And you start to check out the critical systems which transitions into what's called commissioning, where we gradually ramp up the function of each spacecraft into more and more complex modes, trying out things like uh, the attitude determination and control system, which allows us to know and control where the satellite is pointing, uh, the payload itself, which allows us to, to offer our service, and uh, shortly leading to a full entry into regular service. So we'll be occupied with that for the next few hours and the next few days, and uh, stay tuned for updates on our two newest members of the Kepler satellite family. Okay, thank you everyone for tuning in to this milestone launch event for Kepler. Uh, this pretty much wraps up the launch event for today. We're going to continue to provide updates on the Generation 1 satellites and their health 
over our various social media channels. And as a reminder, this is just the start of our aggressive launch campaign that will be happening throughout this year. Our production floor has ramped up to nearly full capacity and will continue to deliver satellites for a variety of launch missions that are happening. Uh, so tune into our social media channels to get updates on when those launches are happening and how we plan to, to conduct the balance of our events. So we've got yet another launch later this year with an even larger deployment of Generation 1 to continue to grow our service pro footprint. So appreciate everyone tuning in and the unrelenting work of our team to get our satellites and our production capability up to the standard. Uh, we look forward to rapidly expanding our network. Until next time. Thanks, everyone. I want to give a huge shout out to the entire team at Kepler and particularly the assembly integration and testing team who put a huge amount of work in to get the satellites ready to go and to be launched up into space where they're orbiting happy and healthy. I'd like to thank everybody on the systems team and on the software team for making this a smooth launch for the operations team. Wow, that was, that was amazing to be able to be a part of a historic moment. I really want to send my greatest thank you to the launch service team and chief among that, I really want to send my thanks to the production team and the systems design team. This is a great accomplishment. We're very excited for the whole team uh, and for the entire company. Woo! Thank you so much to everyone for tuning in and sharing this exciting moment with us. We hope that we can share more moments and more launches to come in the future. Thanks to the team uh, who made us all possible, putting in the long hours, uh, Lots on the dedicated work driving us into the this this next stage and next generation of, of Kepler's presence on orbit and like thank you to SFL for supporting us through this process and, and ongoing and yeah excited to be on orbit and like onwards to the the next launch.